Greetings Rommies and welcome to Vromcoms, the podcast bringing you the joy of sim racing and to this will be February's edition of the podcast. Hooray, we've made it a whole year. Uh, was that a year now? Yeah, no, I think I've lost it was March. Already. I think it Excellent. was March last year, yeah. So we're almost to a year and long may it continue. <laughs> we've obviously not run out of things to talk about. However, it was a little bit thin on the ground in January, but that's to be un- understandable. On this month's episode of Romcoms, we have Serta. Greek Finders, Big Bug Spy, and Why? Cody? Uh, Lamar Ultimate. It's still coming out in February, but it's early access. That's weird. We'll talk about it. And the GT2s are out. Uh, you've seen the TLDR. Now be prepared for the rant. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, uh, New Year, uh, same us, same mess in the background. Um, greeting, gents. First of all, uh, Cody, how's it going in the in the US? Uh, it's it's going. Um, <laughs> the, That's the not political positive. Ads are in full force. Um, ah, no, TV is we, unwatchable. We we aren't allowed to, we aren't allowed to do politics on this channel uh i'm not to, i'm just to... saying it's crazy <laughs> it's crazy uh, we need to keep politics out of motor racing anyway shout out to that one lunatic that was like oh I've come here to get away from politics politics is everything yeah that's Serta, yeah. How, how's how's germany doing uh, better than it was last year. If uh, we're talking politics, the Nazis are getting no. a beating, and that's good. <laughs> um, in the you polls, can't say that on YouTube. In the polls. Oh, oh, absolutely, sure can. I can say that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, an, I'm an anti-fascist since I was born, so to speak, <laughs> because I was born in fascist Spain. So, no, well, I was born in Germany, but we moved to fascist Spain very soon. In any case, um, the Nazis are getting a, a beating in the polls, and that's a good thing. And everything else, well, it's January, February, it's raining, and uh, on the other hand uh, the birds are coming back and mm, spring is everywhere and yeah all that this and the totally uk off. Uh, go ahead oh, go, oh, ahead. go <laughs> ahead i was going to say the the uk uh, i have been out of it twice and on every occasion the top the topic of brexit and what a mistake <laughs> it was has come up without fail <laughs> And not initiate. Carry on, you, Cody. At least if I go, if I go f- well from the SFE. <laughs> well, uh, I, I so will say, oh, go ahead. yeah, some of uh, it was initiated by me. <laughs> Most of it was initiated by the people who were not from the UK. Uh, both, we, like uh, in my most recent trip, it was people from France, Germany, and America of all places. Um, and obviously at SFE, everyone was, was, as soon as they heard you speak, they were like, so, how's Brexit going? Have you got your blue passport? I mean, yes, I had to have a blue passport to come here because of... Anyway. <laughs> sorry, Cody, carry on. No, no, you're good, and I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, yeah, so in pursuit of uh, a real winter, uh, real winter activities, uh, yesterday I went to a hockey game, so that was, that was oh, kind of fun. <laughs> why it was fun. no fun. I, I had a good time I, um, ice hockey i suppose you're you're talking about yeah in the in the venue and, and this is not our topic so i'm, I'm just going to touch on this but in the <laughs> venue i found it very interesting there was a texas flag a big american flag and a canadian flag all side oh, by side beautiful nice. it was yeah, great it was great anyways so that's so, uh in pursuit of so a real te- winter, that is what I've done. <laughs> so Texas is still looking to sec- secede, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> and moving yeah, to we're going to join Canada. We- <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, the Canadians have it. Uh, yeah, maybe. I think Anyways, the Canadians have a lot of sim what racing. the Texans <laughs> would not want to have. Anyway, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, no, we'll get we'll get back to sim racing now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't worry, so about, so don't worry about don't worry about the topic. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you get a multicultural set of people together. They have fun conversations. 
Three I'm going to avoid that. No, no, no. cis <laughs> guys, whatever. Let's move on. Well, we are we are from we are from very different cultures, and that's part of the strength of Rom Rom, isn't it? Really, yeah. is we we come at everything from entirely different perspectives and backgrounds. Um, and on the other so, hand, I did start off this podcast by by saying, "Ah, yes, this is what the world needs: three more white guys with a podcast." <laughs> True that. <laughs> I remember that. True. <laughs> Diversity is of opinion, not of color. That's not how that works. Um, oh, wow. Wow, we've we've started off inflammatory this week, haven't we? <laughs> this oh, month, oh, haven't this we? Is a, this is a great start. I love this. <laughs> this is great. I love this. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of inflammatory, Cody, you wanted to talk about Lemon Ultimate. Yeah. So, um, Lemon Ultimate, of course, uh, the uh, infallible motorsport games new title. Um, <laughs> if you can't tell the sarcasm in my voice, uh, slash S, right? Um, so. Originally, Le Mans Ultimate was uh, going to release at the end of 2023, in December. Um, and then they said, no, we need a bit more time, right? It'll Which come is out okay. In February. It happens in, in, in software development. It's, it's yeah. okay. And it's a couple of exactly, months. Exactly, so right? It's okay. and, and, and that is a good move to make sure that you're releasing a good, complete, finished product on release. Yeah. <laughs> And so now, <laughs> uh, in their infinite wisdom, uh, Motorsport Games has uh, announced that Le Mans Ultimate will release uh, on, I think it's what, February 20th? 20th? It's Tuesday. So when people, from listen to these, when people listen to these, it will be already out in early access. Yeah. Yes, that's the kicker, is that it will be coming out now in early access, which is uh, game developer code for... Um, it's not done yet. <laughs> so. Now, to be, to, be very, to be very, very fair to, I think, more Studio 397, uh, Studio 397 than MSG, the, 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 the meat and potatoes, the driving on track, the cars, the sound, the physics, all of that is done. At least based on, on, we haven't seen anything else, but some yeah. something that they've published. Based on their list of tracks and on their list of cars, yes. Yeah. The, so the, I don't every, know what the, the early access is. like Because they're doing things that haven't been done before. Uh, and yeah. they are this this delayed 24 hours and save states and things like that are factor to the game which it's ostensibly based on um, is known to be very reliable when it comes to saving setups between qualifying and race no wait the opposite of that the opposite of that it's very it, it you have to load your setup at the start of every session because you, there's no guarantee it's actually going to have applied the setup to the car which again not unique to our factor 2 acc does it as well ac does it and ams2 has done it for far too long as well so it's not a unique issue but when we're looking at safe states and things like that and you're saving the progress of your race that's not something you want to be corrupted I remember Correct. what I said when when I uh, when we were um, giving the news about this. I think what they uh, because why it's in early access it's because they fired everyone doing QA, and mm. we are gonna be the QA, like we are gonna be the ones finding the bugs. Yes. <laughs> so go on, Cody. Uh, one of the. Uh, big things that uh we we now know that they they have been teasing this ranked multiplayer right so that mm. will be in there yeah. from the early access uh so they will have a uh, i think they're calling it what race control yeah so race it's, control. it's kind of like your i rating uh yeah. in Le Mans ultimate uh for ranked races coming from our factor two again so it's a proven concept Yes. Uh, well, coming from R Factor Two, it's it's the version that they have released that they released in Alpha. You tested, and we made a video uh, a couple of months mm. ago. So it's not it's not what is in R Factor Two, and it's not the ranked races that no. they had in R Factor Two for the last couple of years. Uh, they no, no, no. they've refurbished and remade the whole thing and changed it completely. As I said, you tested it and gave it a thumbs up, if I remember correctly. 
yeah, if you consider it to be, if you consider it to be the uh, an I rating kind of system, it's absolutely brilliant. And the thing that the worst case scenario when it comes to this kind of online racing is the people who are going to punt to pass and things like that. Yeah. And of all the sims in all the world in all the history of racing to to have to tolerate that. R Factor Two, to my mind, remains the best. Um, mm-hmm. If you're gonna have, if you're gonna have contact, have it in R Factor Two <laughs> because you're not going to get pinged off into it into the barrier or anything like that, like you do in AC or Assetto Corsa Competizione. Or as uh, there's been another um, scandal around iRacing racing about uh, cars making contact, which they're like feet away from each other. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's something that they resolved uh, in the last uh, update. So they they clearly said it's an issue between the communication of the client and the server, and we've resolved yep. that. So yes, absolutely. Well, so, uh, software. Yeah, notably absent uh, from this early access release uh, will be VR. Uh, it will not mm. uh, release into early access with VR support. Which is interesting to me because R Factor 2, which it's based on, does support VR. So that feels like, and this is coming from someone who's not a game developer, but it feels like that would be one of the things that's easier to implement because in your engine, it's already a thing. Uh, But, you know, that is not uh, going to be there for early access release. Um, And then also career mode. Um, which seems like, you know, for something that's trying to, to replicate the WEC 2023 season most accurately, mm-hmm. that feels, uh, I mean, personally, it's one of the things that I'm looking forward to. It's what I try to create uh, myself with various different championships, including the WEC, in my current install of Assetto Corsa. Uh, like, you know, I've got BTCC... 2017 as a you know <laughs> career championship yep. as well as you know formula 2 1960s you know like wild stuff you know uh, but uh, you know that's one of the things i'm look- most looking forward to with this game it will not be included in early access uh release mm-hmm. um and then also we are not sure and this is something that i i have not i have not seen anyone speculate on except for race department so Fair credit to them on that. Uh, but triple screen, uh, we're not even sure if that's supported. I've got an ultra wide. Hopefully that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the ultra yeah, wide will be fine. Yeah. If you've got triples, that might be more of a concern. Um, it's My unclear. Un- we'll have more yeah. understanding whenever it actually releases. I'll be getting it. Uh, go ahead. Wasn't the triples working? at Le Mans last year. It probably was. I don't but remember. I don't remember. I, I, th- I, I think, think the you're right. was single single uh, monitor. Oh, really? Was it? I yeah, look, it, look, let's, let's go on a fact-finding mission for this one real quick. Yeah, I was going to so, say. Let's so the, the right thing that you're saying, no VR and maybe no triples, I heard that they had tweaked the graphics engine specifically mm. for Le Mans Ultimate. So mm-hmm. maybe yep. those tweaks broke vr and maybe triples um so uh, because what what i've heard again what i've heard and not seen in the trailer what i've heard is that the graphics were better than r factor 2 can ever be based on the trailers that they've released i would say no (laughs) <laughs> that looked very much like yeah. R Factor 2 on a medium setting, not even on a high setting. So yeah, it's it's it seems as though the thing it. I feel as though we're slightly out of step with the rest of sim races because everyone mind. in my race team. Now everyone in my everyone in my race team, or the majority of people in my race team, uh, majority of people in ERA. Um, they're all very excited for it. If they're into sports cars, it. they're very excited for it. And I oh, yeah. hate being the voice of cynicism. But in this instance, 
Oh, it's so hard not to be cynical. I mean, it's it's from a company that has sold all the silver that they had. They have yeah. they they got uh, BTCC yanked their license from them. Yeah, and IndyCar. IndyCar, yeah, IndyCar. It seems that there were that that there yeah. was some money flowing so that IndyCar was released. But yes, it, it was most IndyCar saying enough and nascar was sold so it looks very much as if the only license that they could get still hold of was wc for that they've sold everything uh, that, that they had um all the silver all uh, all of grandma's gold teeth and uh, and whatever and they get got rid of what was it 60 percent of the people mm. so they yeah. are economically it sounds very much as if they are it's it's published on february or bust because based on their own financial uh, statements it looked very much yeah. as if february was the last month where they had any money left in in based on their cash flow and the money that they sold i mean nascar reportedly was sold for five million and that was about five months ago, and they were burning through one million per month. So yeah, I don't really think that do they have a, a lot, a lot more time to to pay bills than February. So they were on single monitors as well. Uh -huh. uh, at Le Mans, see at Le Mans. exactly. Yeah. So there so. you go. Uh, so yeah, to that to that point. Um, your your price for uh, uh, taking the plunge and uh, trusting motorsport games uh, will be thirty two ninety nine US uh, mm. twenty four uh, ninety nine in uh, Great British pounds and uh, thirty euros. Uh, so it is yeah. coming out in early access at a discount, uh, pretty much. You know this mm. was fairly anticipated to be a $60 game on release. Um, if you're considering the motorsport games financials aspect of it, it's an interesting decision uh, to not have your... Essentially, this is the initial release, right? This is where yeah, yeah. a lot of people who are going to buy it are going to buy it. Yeah, but you cannot uh, go on early access with, with AAA numbers. Like, you cannot say, you exactly. cannot say, hey, this is going to cost you as much as Baldur's Gate 3. Because everyone right. is going to say, yeah. "Yeah, then deliver Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, no, you are you are absolutely correct. Um, but it is it is an interesting thing that I was really expecting, hoping uh, that it would be a completed finished product that would come out. Mm. I was prepared to put up my sixty bucks for it. Um, yeah, I wasn't gonna put up seventy bucks for it because I'm not <laughs> stupid. But um, <laughs> I was prepared to put up my sixty bucks for it. Wait, and, wait for those uh, with a better currency conversion. <laughs> Sixty bucks American for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's just this is a this is a different um, different release uh, environment than I thought that they would be. Um, mm. Not environment, but different release strategy than I thought that they would be undertaking. Uh, but I guess if the game's not done and you got to get some cash flow in, this is the way to do it. And, and I think that that is essentially what it boils down to. That does not give me hope. Uh, but uh, maybe, maybe there is some, some level of, well, hey, if they can get the money from the early access release that they need to be able to actually finish the game, this might be the right move. That said, mm. uh, whenever the game comes out in early access, we are going to take a look at it in its current state, and we are going to review it based on its current state, and we will keep you posted. And I'm going to drive Persia. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you I'm, I'm all about that, that Porsche. That Porsche 963. Uh, I, I mean, on the other hand, Assetto Corsa Competizione also was published on um, early access, Um uh, Mm. And I think no, I don't remember now about Assetto Corsa too. And um, Assetto Corsa Competizione yeah. was AC2 published in well. early access uh, for a reduced price, twenty-five euro instead of fifty. 
but of course Kuno's ah. situation at that moment was completely different they had yeah, been the bought by 505 games for a nice yeah. sum of money they had Aceto Corsa uh, at their back still producing money and it's still selling um, oh, yeah. today so yeah. this is a, a like both have been published in early access and Aceto Corsa Competizione on early access was um, interesting you can follow you can follow all the development uh, on our on our playlist uh, on our channel that somewhere i i know I, I i got it on early access and was posting updates with every update and it was well an interesting uh <laughs> an interesting walk with them what mm -hmm. one thing that they should have done but i don't know how they could have done would have been releasing it on consoles but translating r factor 2 into console i suppose would have been enormously complicated well this is the yeah. reason why this is the reason why it's interesting that marcel is so confident in what he's doing Mr. the Mr. last Mr. garage mm. yeah because ha that that reduction from 3k to, to, to 1k as far as the physics is concerned i mean i was driving wreckfest last night which runs off of a <laughs> similar-ish system my arms hurt by the way <laughs> um uh the yeah it's uh, i don't think it's ever going to work i don't think that the r factor 2 engine as it is is ever going to work on a console mm. it is way too demanding it requires too much single threaded core performance mm -hmm. to be able to make it work realistically um unless they did find a way to literally cut the um the frequency of the physics engine by by half or a third but then would you have the clarity would it play with other things they, they must have considered it um, and maybe with some time and some extra input, they'll make it work. But again, I can't see it working. Yeah, I, I do want to, because I, I thought about a, an analogy. Um, the the early access uh, thing of, of motorsport games releasing the Mall Ultimate in early access versus these other sims that we've talked about releasing in mm. early access. Like... <clears throat> You know, Kunos releasing ACC in early access. A lot of people probably will draw comparisons to that. It's it's like, you know, your lawyer friend tells you, hey, I took out a $10,000 loan. Yeah. And you're like, okay, cool. And then Motorsport Games is over here as your crackhead friend telling you, hey, I took out a $10,000 <laughs> loan. Yeah. And you're like... Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you looking to buy with that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so it's yeah. it's it's you know, and that's not one to one, but that's kind of why we're mm -hmm. giving mm -hmm. motorsport games an added level of scrutiny here of of releasing yeah. this in early access rather than a full complete polished release cuz and also it's they've already pushed back the date. And so like yeah. if you're going to push back the date, it's like that's okay, you you took that, then you took the time that you needed to 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 finish it, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, right. But uh, yeah. yeah, so it's it's like okay, if that's their time management for getting getting that done, and and they overestimated that, then what else? What, well, the, what the else is going on here? Yeah. I, I mean, I yeah. hope yeah. it's good because it it would be a lot of it fun. It has to be racing R Factor Two style. Um, and and the the endurance that R Factor Two has is 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 quite good, and uh, including Le Mans. On the other hand, Automobilista Two already has Le Mans, and the hypercars there, I like them a lot. I'm crap at There's it. A After half an hour, I I I find myself binning the car into the wall, <laughs> but for half an hour, I'm having a lot of fun. That's the yeah. issue. It's the reason why I haven't fired Automobilista 2 up in a long time is precisely why well, it's, it's Project Car's fault, but um, 
is precisely the reason why I'm still playing ACC more than anything else, is because the game is stable over longer periods of time. You can't... I mean, we've we've found out from various communities that we've worked with, obviously, you put more than 28 people into an AC, into a, a Automobilista lobby, and it starts having disconnection issues for mm. no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Um you uh you go beyond i think it's about six to eight hours of driving and the game just says nope i'm done i I, i've had enough oh okay i i haven't yeah no no no. so okay Hmm? so i commentated a 24 hours of daytona in project cars 2 and that made it to 12 12 hours with several red flags um and general, you need to stop on the track wherever you are now because they the, it had gotten so desynced. Who? Yeah. Okay. Um, and those sorts of netcode issues are one of the, uh, are those one of those things that Kunos, not Kunos, Risa haven't been able to fix. And I don't think that there's anything they can really do. Mm-hmm. There's something fundamental within the madness engine that just means that driver swaps will never be possible long stints will never be possible the amount of cars that you want to put into an endurance race will never be possible so it's Mm. always going to be a sprint racing uh sim which is fine they are working they are working on endurance at the moment like reza reza said at the beginning of the year that hint hint wink wink nudge nudge of course we mm-hmm. are publishing Le Mans and all those cars because we're working on endurance but we'll see i mean yeah Reza have brought until what what was the p- project cars 2 engine into mm-hmm. incredible new heights so b- these guys are we'll very see. stubborn we'll see yeah in it's, a good it's, way. it's going to be a hell of a hurdle to overcome mm-hmm. especially Agreed. especially getting um driver changes to work yeah um, oh yeah but as you say we'll we'll see we don't know what the future holds um at the moment r factor 2 remains outside of i racing r factor 2 remains the only real way that you can go endurance racing mm-hmm. um and if that's what you Asset want the competition is not good for that uh where are the hypercars Ah, yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, WEC endurance racing, okay. I, I, Assetto Corsa also has a workaround. Yeah. I know they have a workaround, but, but it's it a workaround. is... It's, it's an aftermarket uh, software. It's, no, it's yeah. not even aftermarket software. Well, you have to register your Steam ID on the server, and then the first driver has to get out of the car and leave yeah. the server before the next driver can get back in. It's... I've done it. I've done it a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 absolutely. My problems with the set of course are, uh, are are different, but the yeah, I'm yeah. crazy. It's technically kind of like that system. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say no. It's technically possible, but not really practicable for the let's say the seventy percent of yeah. Of it's a races. it's a niche thing. It's for yeah. league racing. It works really well whenever yeah. you have the people who are dedicated to set all that stuff up. Um, yeah. If you're just like, hey, I'm gonna hop in. Uh, that's oof, that's rough to that's that's yes. hard to do because it's not yes, a built-in exactly. e- user. It's not a built-in thing. system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're you're basically relying on a bug of the sim to be able to make it work. Um, so as I say, realistically speaking, for 70 percent of people, um, the only way that you can go sim you can go endurance racing is R Factor Two or I Racing. Mm. Um, I racing has its own problems. R factor two has its own problems. In reality, we're rela- we're waiting on a set of course two to be, oh, fingers crossed, it's going to be good, and then um, the last garage when that eventually comes out, hoping that that has all of the right modules and bits and pieces in place to make that possible. It's no, let's really see what Rennspot uh, brings situation. to, but yeah, we'll have to see. That yeah, yeah Rens- remind me, I have a. I have, oh, go ahead. No, no, go on. Uh, yeah, I have a very uh, just brief thing. I am surprised that we are getting as close as we are to a set of Corsa 2's proposed uh, planned release, mm. and we know so little about it. 
you know like this well but that's we, that's no okay no i was gonna say that's kunos but no for a set of course competition we had already heard more yeah I yeah. yeah i i dare say they might have funnily enough speaking of the last garage i think that a set of course two is going to be very similar to to a again where marcel offermans is hoping that his sim is going to be in around 18 months time um i believe that it there is going to be some token uh content tracks cars things like that much like a set of course when it was originally released was mm-hmm. um they had a load of it a, a couple of italian cars a couple of italian tracks and that was basically the end of it um i dare i dare say the only difference that we'll see is that they're learning as far as tire models handling physics and that that sort of thing will be implemented into ac2 and the graphics <clears throat> no no they they've run away from unreal engine thank you um ah, to, okay so you're saying you're saying you're saying to go back the, to developing the, the, their own in-house engine the physics and tires are going to be kind of uh, a set of course competition I, I think they're going to take the the yeah, the physics and the tires from ACC which with the 1.9 release is actually getting somewhere close like I can actually you, there was a notable difference between 1.8 and 1.9 um and the last point zeros that we've had I think we're on 1.9.7 at the moment with a couple of of hot fixes good grief they've worked some magic with that engine yeah, um, just just don't dri- ju- just don't don't drive on wet because there's there's the the workaround of putting your your wet tires on hacks. thirty two. Uh, so that BPI only that something. only works that only works in wet conditions. You put the you put the tire pressures to max, and it gives you more grip yeah. than uh, than if you have them in the window. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that only works. That only works on wet tires in wet conditions. They do still overheat and they do still lose traction as you, as you would um, expect them to in in drying conditions. Uh, so that that I'm kind of okay with that. I mean, again, I come I come from Arfax too. Who am I to complain about tire issues? <laughs> Fair enough. Set set the pressures to minimum and go ham. Um, Moving, have we have we, have we finished with Lamont Ultimate? I think that I think the way and, that we until we it sum comes it up out is, on Tuesday, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the way that we sum it up is we're conservatively excited. We aren't expecting much from the people who have closed down sixty percent of their business, but at the same time, it's our fact. It's the R Factor Two engine. You're you, critically curious. If yeah, if you mess up the R Factor Two engine. That's an achievement. There's going to be a medal somewhere for you. We will we will get a medal made. You messed up R Factor 2. Well done. I didn't think it was possible. I uh, we're going to make a toilet and and uh, and cover it with gold paint and send it to uh, motorsport games. Hmm. Like a small toilet, not not a real yes. one. Yeah, as yes. for me to sum it up, I'm cheering on my crackhead friend. <laughs> <laughs> don't spend it on the drugs <laughs> Serta Gridfinder has been bought out for yeah. a astonishing amount of money and that's why I'm asking uh, That that's why, why I put it here I don't understand it like don't get me wrong Gridfinder is an interesting proposition but like y- you can find uh, people to commentate you can find uh, buddies to raise with uh, blah 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 but it's nothing special it's not the biggest racing community i would say lfm it's I- 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 is that at the moment but i don't know it's mm, it's a false false comparison there you okay. grid finder compared to sim grid or just race well, yeah, but just ra- just race are our hobbyists. Just race are four people, yes. uh, three people that that do it in their free time. Gridfinder that's was all, wa- ha- that's all. Gridfinder, I was no. Gri- Gridfinder had gotten uh, seed money for mm-hmm. for uh, for starting, um, and uh, they 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 were reportedly growing bigger. And they got yeah. sold for a seven 
figure sum seven figure who invests a million or more than one million because seven figures yeah. gets you uh, until nine million nine hundred ninety nine and so on who invests that kind of money in a small ish community because grid finder was not a big community was mm. it was an okay community that is not making that big of an impact like race department getting bought by what was it overtake and we don't know for mm. what sum i understand that while i have my own opinion about race department the community is there the discussions are there the 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 sim racing the there. happens happens yeah exactly sim racing happens a lot on on race department so buying or selling race department for a seven figure as i said i don't know how much money uh, uh went over over or uh, uh, went from one, one account to the other for race department but for grid finder seven figures i don't understand it and if you look at who bought it it's even more strange who did buy it so it's a company uh, i would have to look it up the name but it's a company that has some small real life racing community and now they want they're still not there they want to build up a virtual racing community of people meeting and so on so it was all very strange i can look it up um no, I was, I'll, I'll give I'll give my perspective because I've been engaged with Gridfinder for a very very long time. I actually have created liveries for them and commentated. Like uh, some of my commentary connect connections came through there as well. Um, mm -hmm. So f to 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 not understand the uh, the appeal of Gridfinder, I think, is a slight. Um, uh, misjudgment. I, I'm not the saying it doesn't have appeal. Please don't yeah. understand me wrong. I, I understand the appeal. I don't understand a seven-figure appeal. Now I can I can do that. I can we can make sense of that really really quickly. Okay. Um, so even without even Rafa without racing, the context. Uh, Rafa racing community. A private oh. supercar club focused on driver development. Focused on driver development. Mm -hmm. Now, ah, now that may ch change. Now, I, I'm not under NDA for any of that stuff. No. Okay. So, sorry. <laughs> As I say, I've had one to ones with them. I've spoken to them. For, I've mm -hmm. been speaking to them for a long to them for a long time. I literally um, uh, have I have the owner or was owner friend uh, friends with them on Discord. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Uh, I've had a lot of a lot of exposure to Grid Finder, um, and the easiest way to slice it is if you're not paying money, you are the product. Um, oh, absolutely. Clearly, there is clearly there is some uh, some benefit to having though having people who are registered be uh, engaged in some way, shape, or form be that it might just be bearing in mind this is a supercar club that has bought it it might just be a really quick and easy way to either source pro drivers or um uh find an audience for their supercar club broadcasts mm. now when you bear in mind and again certi will be able to speak way more to this than uh, than i possibly could um when you look at how much is being how much money is being changed hands to get broadcasting rights and things like that it makes a lot more sense to own the platform that you're broadcasting from yes but um broadcasting rights at the moment the only big broadcasting rights or the the only big money that you, you can do for broadcasting rights is on linear television like streaming sports is a niche streaming esports mm. is even more niche so and 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 our own broadcasts are a testament to that much as we love the broadcast so um like 
Formula One makes a lot of money selling the, the, the TV rights. NASCAR makes yeah. enough money or made enough money. I think th this year is, is a little bit more bumpy uh, selling uh, TV rights. IndyCar survives selling TV rights. And mm. that's about it. Like DTM, I don't think they're doing uh, a lot of money even less now that they are GT3. SRO does not make a lot of money. Uh, one of the reasons why the WTCR went down the drain was that, unluckily, because I liked it, nobody was watching it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Formula now, E is a long, long-term investment. Yeah. And there's another, there's another um, level to that as well, which is cost of entry for a long time cable network television mm -hmm. and there was a third one which i can't remember for the life of me now just a, a way of getting channels on your tv satellite yeah sky yeah duh of course there were only three ways that you could get your broadcast out to a, a, a wide audience now we have youtube now we have twitch and as much as i hate to say it now we have kick <laughs> So yeah, but those don't make and money, I mean, and 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 selling and buying the broadcast rights no. to those don't make money. No, no, no. But you're not, you don't make money off of broadcasting. You will always lose money. So if you can get your people to attract and then let someone else handle the platform costs, that reduces your overheads. Which means so, that you can give away that license for free. Because then you're getting the money comes from having eyes on your sport. It so comes from I'm, I'm, t shirts. I'm, I'm looking at the at the website of, of this Rafa Racing Club and I don't mm -hmm. see anything about uh, oh, them them making races. Um, so it's networking, training, social are there three uh, the three columns. Which is what Gridfinder is. Sure, but uh, again I understand the attractivity of Great Finder. It's it, 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 it's mm. a good platform. It's an interesting platform. While it's not my favorite platform, but that's just because of me. Uh, does it has nothing to do with Great Finder? I understand the attractivity. I don't understand the seven figure attractivity of buying Great Finder. That's what I don't understand. And and I don't understand why. Uh, for me, completely unknown group like the the Rafa Racing is uh, uh, paying seven figures for that. I just don't understand. They that. have an esports racing team. They say yeah. It says that it's coming soon. Yeah, the there's there's a lot of there's a lot of we have a lot of money. Let's spend it. On, let's not build our own dashboard. Let's use this one about yeah. it. Honestly, they've also got now. A gym that's also they say coming soon this seems like oh, it's excellent. like a venture capital and like, and if you look if you look at the, at the pictures on the website they yeah. look so mm. very much computer uh, like computer imagery they are not real places at least the way i see them i may be completely wrong yeah, so th I, I see what you're looking at with the the club homepage like those yeah. are architectural renderings for sure yeah yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's yeah. like this is a coming soon thing. This is this doesn't exist yet. So so one of the things one of the things that Gridfinders actually was was working on last time I spoke to them was specifically the driver training and development and uh, I rating but not I rating. Mm -hmm. They were focusing they were focusing essentially not on your pace but on your reliability as a driver, your cleanliness of racing, things like that. So. If we're looking at let's we're again speculating once again, um, if there if these are a gentleman club that are wanting to keep track of their drivers and who's got penalty mm -hmm. points from different races and and communities and things like that, and who is a reliable driver who always turns up and always races clean. Gridfinder is the perfect perfect match. There okay. is also the other argument. Which there's a lot of people who are buying up these sorts of companies. Rafa well, may have just gone, 
uh, where else can we go? Who can we get to? And they've got an and have nabbed grid finder. Go, Cody. Y'all, I was I was thinking Rafa, this is like Saudi oil money. No, no, no. This is Texas. No, 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 it's oil American. Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's from Houston. This is yes. this is a, a guy named Rafa Martinez, uh, and he is. I know Martinez. Yeah, oh, you do. You know Rafa. Martinez? I don't know him personally. I know of him. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, He's... so that's the guy who's bought this essentially through his yeah. through his companies. Uh, he has purchased this because he's got his thing. Entrepreneur and VC, race car driver, car collector, right? Looking at his okay. Yeah. So, so what you're saying, what you're saying, um, what you're saying, Ike, is this is a gentleman driving driving group that wanted a club uh, uh, that wanted a way to track their own people and they looked around yeah. found grid finder and said hey that's a nice proposition okay i understand that and uh, you cody are saying this is this is uh, oil money and uh, this is an aficionado who's who's giving <laughs> who's giving uh, money for that again i understand that what i don't understand is uh, seven figures but hey if somebody wants uh, to buy Run rum for seven figures we're all in <laughs> and, and we're gonna stay with you seven figures for run yeah, rum? Yeah. hey l send me send me the contract i'll drive down to houston shake your hand myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely uh no that's the wrong math rafa martinez yeah so i dare say whether it's oil money or not this I, is I a man who oil money i'm just yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this is this He's is a man who, who's got a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, this is a man who knows, um, uh, who who has money to throw at at, at stuff, uh, has had an idea, and go on. In his YouTube bio, he says, "I am an energy trader by profession." That means oil money. That means <laughs> oil money. <laughs> cool. <laughs> GG. <laughs> either way, either way, it means he has more money to than he, he has more money than he knows what to do with. Seven figure in the greater scheme of things is actually not all that much now when it comes to business partnerships and sales and things like that. I mean, uh, Studio 397 was bought for way more a few years ago before inflation went crazy. So there is this, there is a distinct possibility this is just a case of someone with far too much money not knowing what to do with his money and not knowing the value of things. Which again, more power to Gridfinder for making that work. So... Mr. Martinez, um, Rom Rom salutes you and uh, seven figures. <laughs> Do you want to buy us? <laughs> this way. Um, just, just say it. Yeah, and, yeah. and we can discuss it in English and Spanish. So whatever you prefer. Uh, and he we did don't even... go to Barcelona to race in, uh, in some championship. Yeah, probably Creventic. Probably. I believe, I believe that's where, I, where, I've, where I've seen him most recently. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, the the again, yet again, it, it's just it's real racing and sim racing coming together, coming to this happy ground in the middle. As as um, we've been saying in the last months, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And wow, I'm gonna say this now. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this now. We need to be so careful over the next few years that sim racing doesn't lose its identity as sim racing whereas it's starting to become viewed as discount real racing again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this, this you're gonna guy, say cody yeah 11 months ago he posted a video to his youtube channel with 2000 views uh yeah. and it says uh, our first racing simulator is here is it worth 130k yep yep that's a man with enough and money is it <laughs> is he talking about software or is he talking about a complete system like it's a rig here? it's a, yeah it's a rig it's a motion so rig. it's a rig you, you, it's you guys do know how much the the oh. gara costs right less than that yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow and that comes with a pc doesn't it probably well yes oh yeah yeah the the, the imsim i think that does yeah that's all inclusive. yeah the, that the, comes the IMSIM, with the, a pc the for IMSIM 60 is grand. a complete Ooh. system yeah. Oh man, what so, are okay, you spending one hundred and thirty k on? So Rafa Martinez has a lot of money, and uh, f in some way he got in contact with Gridfinder because he wanted 
some way to track his races and the races of his gentlemen yeah. racing his buddies friends, and for some reason he, he his his hand slipped and he put a zero more than he had planned <laughs> to, to put in the check right. is what you guys are saying yeah. okay yeah. probably all right i'm this, decimal, this, has, no, a, this yeah. has a time code where it goes to the to the actual oh, perfect here Okay. It has the decimal place in the wrong position. That's all that happened. <laughs> ah, ads. Yes. Oh, of course, of course. Um, Gridfinder are a European company, so they work with with dots, Jeez. and uh, and the Americans work with commas, ah, and that's how it came to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's <laughs> who is Simcrest? I don't know. don't know, but we're I'm, we're getting that, too far. Yeah, too this, far I'm getting in the weeds here, but I, uh, I, this is the most interesting man in sim racing to me right now. Uh, yeah, man, world is going it's not on. a sim crest; it's sim croft. Anyway, anyway, yeah, no, we'll figure it out later. Into This is what the podcast is for. Are you enjoying <laughs> this? Make sure you leave a like button. <laughs> leave a like on the like button. <laughs> And if you want to support our rantings, go to Patreon. dot com. Rum rum. <laughs> Where you can actually watch us recording this. Because Cert is going to cut a whole load of stuff out of this. You can actually hear these idle ramblings and research and things like that recorded live. Yes, you can. Uh, normally it's Saturday afternoons uh, for very early in the morning for Cody and relatively late in the afternoon for uh, for Cert and I. Uh, but you get the pure uncut ramblings once a month of uh, three sim races with very, very, very different backgrounds. Uh, and of course, obviously, the, the chat is there as well. So if you want to uh, leave us comments or, or um, put uh, put ideas into chat as well for, for, uh, uh, for subjects and things like that, that's there as well. Uh, but yeah, thank you to our patrons. Uh, and, our, and our YouTube channel members who who make this so much easier to warrant doing. And again, my goodness, it's incredibly good fun being able to just talk <laughs> sim racing with, uh, with some like-minded people who, again, we disagree on quite a few things, uh, but, but that disagreement and that um, being able to come to a center point, I think, gives us a lot of clarity. Yeah. So we've we've unraveled the mystery of the grid finder purchase. Kind of. We have. Now we're going to unravel the 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 mystery of my frustration with Kunos. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <sighs> now I will say this is absolutely a therapy rant. Absolutely categorically a therapy rant. And uh, partly because we have a race se- uh, uh, a race season that's just started that Serta is 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 uh, is broadcasting on the Romvon channel. You can see the race from Spa on last Sunday. It was fun, um, but a couple of weeks before oh, that, come on. You, made, you, you made a good position. Yeah, I made a few, um, hey. mainly mainly because ah oh, man. Ah, uh, speaking of that race, I spoke. You know the Lexus I was chasing for third. Yeah overall yeah i spoke to sam afterwards mm-hmm. and he said yeah man i'm really glad that you like let off because i was dr- i was going at like 110 percent. if i had gone for another couple laps i would have crashed <laughs> so apparently my my uh my accident prevented another accident which is fine anyway um so a couple of weeks beforehand kunos released the gt2 pack Along with the GT2 pack, they also released a new BOP for the GT3 cars, which threw the low fuel motorsport B- BOP, which had been established for the better part of a year now, completely out the window and, and had the to be ERA, entirely redone. E- ERA uh, BOP also, but that's another story. And the ERA BOP by extension. We don't use, we use the majority of the, the LFM BOP mixed with a bit of the pit skill BOP mixed with our own testing. We know how f- how fast each driver can get each car, um, and then we 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 make a couple of tweaks on between mm-hmm. tracks and things like that because it's not perfect. They're, they're all relying on on driver data. Um, we don't have the correct information, and Kunos, we don't have the tools we need to BOP the cars. Give us back engine restrictors, I swear. <laughs> rant, so, rant, rant. I yeah no if if if. 
you can skip like 10 15 minutes this may go on for a while um so they released the new bop which broke the lfm bop they changed the physics of some of the cars which people were um uh were trying to get uh through um evaluation tests to get to be able to drive for the season um and the B- the BOP that was applied uh, made both the Bentley and the Nissan somewhere to the tune of a second and a half faster around Barcelona. <laughs> Before, in the very early days after the the it was released, I actually went on a, in a race, did a forty three something, which is pro times. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um. They also released, by far and away, the worst balanced set of cars that we have seen since the uh, the Ferrari 296 came out. The GT2 pack is fun, and it, it, it creates much better racing, and I have said, more power and less downforce is exactly what GT3 needs. Mm-hmm. It's a really, really good... GT2 is a really good formula, Um creates fantastic racing and generally is it's good for motorsports just what i'm saying gt1s would be the better. release huh gt1s would be better but let's forget that they really. basically are yeah. they basically are gt1s anyway, at this yeah. point they have to they have to retain the the core chassis everything else is on on the table and then they're bop'd which is perfect. Um, technically perfect. The problem is that the BOP that was released when the GT2s came out is trash. Mm-hmm. There's no other way to put it. The The only car that's worth driving is the Maserati uh, MC20. It's the only car worth driving. And if you see anybody driving any other car, it's because they have a soft spot. Soft spot soft spot for a particular car the mercedes unbelievably broken in a straight line it makes the speed differential between the lexus and the rest of the gt field look like a a, a fair by a fair balance it's insane um the ktm has as much aero as a gt3 car I actually looked at the apex speeds. The apex speeds are the same in the KTM as in the GT3 cars around Red Bull Ring. It's mental. And then the two Porsches are down on about 50 horsepower and set up horribly. I don't know why they thought that the setups that they're running were appropriate. Even the aggressive setup has it handling like a barge with more platform movement than i would expect to see in a rallycross car let alone a gt2 car so bops in assetto corsa competizione have always been a problem right mm. and i don't know why oh yeah the weird thing the weird thing is is there was rumors on the uh, like before the release that they were implementing the lfm bop with a mm-hmm. few like minor tweaks and things like mm-hmm. that to make things work a little bit better and you can tell that there's hints that they've actually listened to the community but you know how like you can say something to your manager and they go oh yeah i know what i'll do i'll throw a pizza party that'll fix it (laughs) that's kind of Mm -hmm. the only real thing that i can i can equate it to they've taken the information on board and done the exact wrong thing with it i think Part of the issue is, at least with regards to the GT3s, we know that they are in contact and they have the contact A to Mm. the companies and B to the drivers. So I think part of it is that they get the information from real life and real life, of course, feels differently, absolutely differently. Because you you have the G forces that inform your body much better than than they do in uh, in sim racing, yeah. And I think they listen more to the real life drivers than they listen to the sim racing community. Therefore, they set up the the feel of the cars and 
I suppose also the BOP based on real mm. life, which I understand what they are doing it, but they forget that this is a simulation and therefore yeah. is going to be driven differently because we don't have the whole body of information that mm. a race driver has. And I think that is at least part of the issue why the BOPs in Assetto Corsa Competizione and the setups are not there. Yeah. Um, I agree with you to an extent. But go and drive the Porsche 935. I hate Porsches in real life and in sims, so um, I, I will do only for you. That's fair. No, 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 no. Uh, in, in which case, don't, because they won't endear them. They, they they won't endear <laughs> you to them in the slightest. The uh, the Porsche 911, especially in ACC, has been one of those cars that once you've got to grips with the sim, you drive the 911 because that'll teach you to drive properly. Mm-hmm. Like, you learn ACC in something like the Mercedes, the BMW, the Bentley, Nissan, any of the front-engined big cars. You, you get to grips with what the, what the sim wants you to do. And then what you do is, once you've got to grips with that and you're confident with it, you, there's no mistakes, nothing like that, you then go and drive the Porsche. You don't have to drive it competitively, but you go and drive the Porsche. Because if you do something wrong in the 9, 911, 991 uh dash two or the 992 it will kill you you will be off in a gravel trap somewhere it will tell you you did this wrong and then throw you at the throw you at the barriers um it takes an incredible amount of skill to keep any of the gt3 or now the gt2 porsches on the track at any kind of pace but the Porsches are down on power they have they don't they don't have the apex speed that the GT3s have because while they are the same format they have a load more weight the 935 especially is with all the extra bodywork and things like but, that but the engines well. are more powerful or aren't they they are more powerful but the Porsches are the least powerful mm -hmm. of any of the other cars, which, if they were lighter or if they were faster, would make sense. But they aren't. They're slower. In every way, their braking effort is lower. The Again, the setups out of the box, the setups can be fixed. But the setups are made in such a way that it handles more like a road car than a race car like it has a ridiculous Eek. amount of the, the 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 damper travel is set to maximum which obviously like, on a race car you don't want no you 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 put it at the at the minimum that allows you still to to take the the corners in in a controlled way like you don't want the car to to slug around from side to side much to the contrary that's uh, I remember when, uh, I don't know who it was, I think it was uh, uh, Game of Muscle or somebody saying, oh, but this car jumps so much in uh, when, when Automobilista 2 came out, mm. uh, so there were some, some of these influencers saying, oh, it's too bumpy. And I was like, have you ever been on a track, on a, yeah. on, on a racing car? It's effing yeah. bumpy because it's not your Mercedes with hydro, uh, 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 with hydraulic suspension. It, the suspension is as hard as they can get with, and uh, you you will come out of the car a couple of centimeters shorter because your whole yeah. body is gonna be compressed because the, of the suspension. So yes, it's bumpy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, anyone no, with that on. complaint needs to go off the dirt in a go kart at least once. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I don't will... make a habit of crashing in real life. <laughs> I don't make a habit of it either. I've just I've gotten a couple of of 
wheels off into mm. into some dirt before and oh Eey. you feel it and then yeah, the yeah. next day you feel it too <laughs> yes yeah, yeah, yeah all these all, all these drivers who are saying how say how it wasn't that bad a crash they are playing it down it was a bad <laughs> crash yeah um it's yeah. it's bathurst bathurst this week um and one of the mark cars has already gone backwards into the wall at the top of the mountain um, backwards and, yikes yeah yeah, yeah yeah uh through suleiman park Sheesh. got it wrong hit the wall on it tapped the wall on the outside broke the rear suspension and then just did a one did a about 270 degrees back to the inside wall Oof. it was not pretty Nope. But again, it's going to be one of those things that you feel in the morning, and it's if mm. if you aren't feeling it in the morning, you're incredibly fit, basically. Um, or unse- I- 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 unsensible, you've had too many crashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that. But even then, it's not. Mm, yeah, it's you. You you don't. You never stop feeling the pain. You just get more used to it. Mm. Yeah. Um, and of course. You're on a racetrack. If if a little pain is what is is what it takes to for you to be on a racetrack, yep, I'm, I volunteer. I'm in. Down. Yep, done. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. zero complaints here. So what? Um, coming back to to ACC, what you're saying is the GT2 BOP and setups are as crap as all the other BOPs and setups have been in a set of Corsa competition until now. No, no, because they're worse. Oh. That's the problem. With the thing is, is that without any kind of BOP, I could keep up with people in the Bentley, the Nissan, the 650s, all of those really old GT3 cars. Yeah. In the GT2s, they are multiple seconds away from pace, and that's against the K- the KTM. That's not even taking into account the two meta cars, the Mercedes and the and the Maserati. They are multiple seconds a lap against a slower driver. <laughs> Let's not forget that That's... KTM makes bikes, so them making the crossbow has always been mind-boggling. But another story. In fairness, that's the motorbike of cars. Yeah. No bodywork. Yeah. No, uh, no fancy anything. Double wishbone suspension front and rear. Yeah. Uh, it's essentially a, a road-going Formula One car with all the bodywork taken off. Yeah. I mean, what's what's more motorcycle than that? Um, <laughs> I need and a even the racing. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. go on. I need a one-make racing series with the KTM slingshot. The th- like too. three-wheeled car that they have. I was gonna say I now, now, to now you're testing me because I haven't looked <laughs> at that for a long this, time. I don't even. Oh, those know, things. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have angry. Those. No, we don't have them in the UK, as far as I know. Yeah, um, I think you, you oh, get a motorcycle license to drive these because they're technically a tricycle. So that's it. Yeah. So it's it's the crossbow, uh, with only one with the, one with the wheel, wheel at the back. Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Interesting. Uh, it, I mean, it's that. a different it's a different vehicle. It's a different like chassis and all that, but it's functionally. They bad. even call it KTM Crossbox. Here. <laughs> so. Anyway, I don't know um, how upset. I am. So, yeah, so the the GT2 car is still an, is is still a crossbow. Um, but it's the GTXR mm. is what mm. the GT2 car is. And it's exactly the same as the original crossbow. It is just about got some bodywork on it. Um, and that's more for the aerodynamic benefit than anything else and they've thrown it into the GT2 class at I think 680 horsepower. Is it still an Audi engine like in the crossbow? It will still be an Audi. Yeah, it will still be an Audi engine. Wait, hang on a minute. I think I got this wrong. This is by Polaris. It's not. It's not even a, a KTM. So no, Never I mind. see. Oh, okay. It's it's called Never KTM mind. Slingshot. So yeah, it is a KTM Slingshot. Oh, okay. You were, yeah, it's maybe maybe, as maybe one. Polaris oh. and KTM have worked together. I don't know. Aren't KTM French? Austrian. Austrian. Uh, yes. Okay. But so no, you, yeah, no, I'm I'm just seeing a Polaris slingshot on my end here. Yeah, no, no, okay. no, no. The, I think yeah. I got it wrong. Either my bad. Way. Sorry, that was more off topic. Either than way, I yeah, I'm fine. Not. Don't worry about it. No, it's Yoink either way. The, the 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 point is is that oh yeah, and of course, speaking of Audi, there is an Audi GT2 as well, and that's exactly how forgettable that car is. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lamborghini. You know, it's funny. No, yes. 
I think that that's the prettiest GT2 car. That one and the 935. The the Audi GT2. He Especially wasn't, in its, he like, wasn't talking livery. about the looks, you know. I know, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, the... Um, I'm just going to make sure that I haven't fi- uh, missed any others now. Because um, I'm really upset about that. Uh, 935, the 991... Uh, the AMG, the Audi, the Maserati. Yeah, but they haven't haven't included. Oh, it's because the because the uh, Lamborghini is an, uh, a cup car. Um, that's the reason why. But it is technically GT2 specification. I just don't think it's GT2 spec in this particular se- uh, se- uh, game. I yeah, I'm was very upset when all of this was released, and I'm still mostly not over it. There was a lot of very peculiar changes that um, only Kunos could could make, um, because if anyone else had make, made it, it would have made some kind of sense. Um, it's a difficult it's a difficult place for him at the moment, especially with AC two coming out in the in the future. Mm. Yeah, I was surprised yeah. because I uh, the the information that we had directly from from Kunos was that they had stopped developing uh, ACC. So them bringing the GT twos and Nürburgring and 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 Red Bull Ring, I I was yep. very surprised. So I there may be some motorsport gaming stuff going here because Five Hundred Five has uh, had to to uh, get away with with a lot of of people. So Five Hundred Five Games, the owners of Kunos have uh, uh did have oh, to, to fire people, people. Yeah. which influenced while they thought it would not uh, it ended up influencing kunos so maybe 505 games needed a little bit of money and that's why why they did that and moved to ac2 we don't know there is also the other the other option that there was someone had a fine read through the contract and the contract stated that they had to cover up to x amount mm-hmm. of time or mm-hmm. x amount of of cars or whatever um and that's the reason why we're getting the gt2 uh we're getting the gt2 cars at all again i will say uh for any of you league owners out there the gt2s and the gt4s are a much better multi-class proposition than the gt3s and gt4s the apex speed is so much closer mm-hmm. and the straight line speed is so much more different between the two that you will get safer multi-class racing from it. Um, so there is a use for it, for the class being in the game as well. Um, it's not it's not an unwelcome addition. It's just frustrating that, once again, we're pleading with Kunos to actually do some proper BOPing, or allow us to. Just, like, give mm-hmm. us the tools that SRO has to BOP the cars... Mm-hmm. And communities like ERA, LFM, Pitskill, SimGrid, all of those will make it work. They will absolutely make the game work and give you a balance of performance that is representative across all of you, the, the cars that are present in the game. Again, I would love nothing more than to be able to bring the 650S out of the closet and have it be balanced. But if they have because not I done think... it until now, they're not going to start doing it, right? It's a difficult one. Mm. Because, technically speaking, it's all there already. They just need to expose it so that people can get at it through config files and things like that. Mm. Okay. But, as you say, that requires work. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And it's work they might not be willing to put in. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one, and I do feel for them to an extent, but simultaneously... (sighs) Yeah. I think that gives us brings us to the end of at least the teaser topics. Is there anything else that's happened in the last month that you guys want to talk about? What question do we want to put out about favorite blah blah blahs for ha, next ha, month? Ha, ha. 
I'm I'm claiming this one. Who's your favorite woman in motorsport? Oh, good one. Good one. I'm going to start us off. Mine's really easy. She's a Bathurst at the moment, walking up and down the pit lane, and is, is the daughter of one of uh, one of the very most important people in American racing, and that's Shay Adam. Yeah, that's a good one. The woman drives like a demon. She knows everything about everything when it comes to cars. The fact that she's a woman is purely like a side note as far <laughs> as she's concerned. She is a wonderful representative for women in motorsport. She is an excellent person all around. Um, and honestly, listening to... Uh, I, I have, on several occasions, <laughs> fallen asleep to her pit reports, both at Le Mans and Daytona. <laughs> we <should laughs> not be because of her voice. The wrong way. <laughs> yeah, not because of her voice, just because it was like three o'clock in the morning and I should have been sleeping for quite a while before then, and she just happened to be uh, uh, giving a pit report. But yeah, Shay, Adam, Shay Adams is, is the person that I will start off with. Sort of. You want to go next? And I, I have you, mine. You go next because I'm, I'm trying to find the the name um, of uh, of both. Ah, cool. I, I know who I want to to talk about. Oh, he's cheating. Um, he's gonna okay. give two. No, I don't. I, yeah, right. first of of that, yes, but because yeah, only one. No, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mine's. Uh, Mine feels like it's obvious. Michelle Mouton, like <laughs> one of the greatest yeah, yeah, rally yeah. drivers of all Absolutely time. Absolutely spot on. Yep. Tremendous badass. Uh, she is just fantastic. Uh, and then uh, if I didn't have to pick one, I would pick just like all of the Iron Dames. Uh, they're awesome. Yeah. Uh, but Actually, yeah, Michelle Mouton's my, my main what answer. Are their, what are their names? Come on, what's wrong with me? Oh, for those um, unfamiliar, while he's looking that up, uh, Michelle Mouton was a Group B rally driver yes. who just came out of nowhere and absolutely drove the pants off of you know, everybody else. Like her, her main like rival uh, in that era was Walter Rall, who mm -hmm. is one of the all-time greats, and she was kicking his butt often. Like mm. she, she was fantastic, uh, and and there was a a lot of you know like can a woman do it? And and Michelle Mouton proved yes, that yes. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. yeah. So the Iron Dames crew, I'll give you this this one for free because because uh, that works. Uh, Rahel Frey, Michelle Gatting, Sarah Bovey, and Dorian Pan. Yep. Um, and I can't disagree with you either. Because they're all again, it's it's very much a case of people people will turn around and say, oh, it's 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 political correctness gone mad and things like that. No, 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 no. They just happen to be four women in racing. That's yeah, it, and they're gonna they're gonna be driving an LMDH car next year. Mm -hmm. Also, by the way, uh, Dorian Penn is like nineteen. She's uh, she might yeah, be yeah. like twenty She's now, mad. but she is yeah. She's mental, super young, and just one. super talented. Yeah. No, no, Dorian Pan was 19 uh, yeah. last year. Yeah. Last yeah. year. So okay. she's 20, okay. she might be 20 now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely mental. Absolutely mental that they, they're... Again, the fact, that we have, the fact that we have to draw any attention to the fact that they're female whatsoever is kind of insulting to their talent. But... A little bit. I mean, they do drive a bright pink car, so it's... You know, it's, it's part of the... It's part of the, the experience. They're not yeah. all fe female team, but... Holy yeah. cow! They hold their own yeah. like crazy. Like they were, they were fighting with Corvette Racing for an all-out win at Le Mans this year. Corvette yeah. Racing, you know, <laughs> yeah, my yeah, guys, yeah. right? Yeah. Like they were, they were trading blows, like neck and neck, just as good. It was amazing. Mental. Yeah, amazing. All right, so, uh, so at last you found I, found, I found the names because I, I had the sweet. I, I, I had the, the faces, but I didn't remember the names. So you'll remember those names because when we talked about favorite drivers, I, I named them. So, mm -hmm. uh, as I said, I'm going to name two. The first one is going to be Ellen Loa, who mm. uh, drove TTM, has driven truck yep. uh, racing, and has driven Dakar, and like as i said in that time and i repeat it that lady has petrol in their in her veins 
Uh, mm. She if it, if it goes fast, makes room room, and and you can race against others, she's gonna say yes. Where do I sign? So Eleanor is an impressive woman. Um, also, she is of the older generation. She was born sixty five. So she would be, um, uh, when was Michel Mouton? I think it's about the same generation as Michel Mouton, if I remember correctly. Yeah, M Mouton raced in the mid 80s and late 80s. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the other one is uh, Charlie Martin. Again, a name that, that you'll recognize from the last time that we talked about favorite drivers. Charlie Martin is a trans woman who is very much a woman of course and second second of course an lgbtq um uh, ambassador and she kicks ass she i think she's driving gt3s at the sro at the moment um mm. but uh, if i remember correctly she's got uh, one of the world records in uh hill climb yeah that sounds right yeah so uh those are my two favorite women female drivers um not of all time but but yeah the two names that that honorable come to mind automatically honorable mention to jade edwards as well i Race don't recognize the, the name tell me tell yeah, me a little bit about her uh she is the only female driver in btcc um oh. she had a couple of years out because there was not enough sponsorship she regularly no. finishes in the top 10 um and is again mm. another one of the just it's it's about the racing the fact that she's female has nothing to do with it um i have to as a british person <laughs> <laughs> say i i she will she will find me and she will beat me up if if i don't um third yeah, generation yeah. BTCC of, driver says wikipedia that's it yep spot on um so there is one other question that i have and this is going to be one for for comments below as well um okay but so we've got two we've got two here Ooh. all right so this is this is more of a this is an opinion because gt3 is taking over the world everyone races gt3 in every single uh track in every single climate in every single um uh class of of, of driver we already know Cody's response. What's your opinion? <laughs> is GT3 taking over a good thing? Are we losing diversity in racing because of the uh, the amount of GT3 racing that we're seeing? Things like DTM, TCR, Luke going the way, way of the, the Dodo because of GT3 or in spite of GT3? So if, your we, if you take a look at the, at the viewer numbers, and those are... TV viewer numbers are those who bring the money. GT3 yep. is nowhere. Um, I think it's it's a little bit higher than Formula E. Um, and that's about it. Like, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the, the viewer numbers are uh, Formula 1, NASCAR, IndyCar. Those are the three. And, and NASCAR and IndyCar are far away from, from F1. And IndyCar is yeah, yeah, yeah. far yeah. away from, from NASCAR. Like, NASCAR still has more pull, if I remember correctly again, than IndyCar. Um, yeah. why, the, the reason why I think GT3 is, is taking over, let's call it this way, let's, let's take your words, is... Um, because it's the easier easiest way to get um mm. people with money yep. to support your team like uh, yeah. give me give me a seat uh so as a gentleman driver um who who has got enough money um i'm giving you 100,000 dollars euro whatever uh or, or similar um uh, per year and I'm allowed to in every second race to do a stint on on yep. the GT3 and call myself self a motorsport driver. Um, yep. I think that is the reason why GT3 up to a point is taking over. It's not taking over as far as I can see from the data. Um, it's not taking over in uh, with regards to viewership. 
much to the contrary nobody is watching the adac masters whatever dtm went very much down the drain compared to when they were uh, driving class one uh, cars like yep. m- every year less and less people watch dtm because pff, it's just mm, and sro is nowhere to be seen so i think it's taking over because it's easier to get people to pay to 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 just have a couple of stints and yeah. all the others are costing a lot of money like gt1 for example died because building the cars and the motors and everything else did cost too much money dtm exactly the same reason the the, the so companies left dtm because they could not afford to have formula one wec and dtm and gt3s yeah. which they've they've always have and they will always have because the translation the visual translation of uh, gt3 to the sc- the cars at least the high level cars that they sell is is quite easy it's quite straight yeah yeah exactly to give you a, a <laughs> We're literally waiting for the for, for the for the race for uh, the at Bathurst to start. Um, so, uh, to put things into perspective, uh, GT World on YouTube uh, are the official SRO channel. Mm-hmm. They streamed a pre- a uh, a premiere event for the GT2 release, twenty three thousand views three weeks ago. Um, practice one for Bathurst, thirty five thousand views. Um, practice three, forty-eight thousand views. <laughs> uh, practice four and five around the same. Practice six is even higher at fifty-one. Qualifying, ninety-four thousand views in thirteen hours. <laughs> yeah. While while the and the, that's that's I think is the. But Bathurst is GT three or, or or supercars? Which Bathurst are you Bathurst. talking about? Just GT3, 12 okay. hour. Bathurst, mm-hmm. 12 hours. The ah, okay. Bathurst yeah. 1000 is, okay. is uh, supercars. Yeah. Super yeah. Cars. Ah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, it's, as I say, it's, it's part of the SRO GT World Championship this year. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, so the, the point is 100,000 views in, thir- in, in 13 hours, and that will continue to go up as time goes on. It's racing is one of the, is one of these evergreen content and again yeah. it's part of the reason why youtube is important but it's as in a spite of being gt3 it's because it's bathurst i'm Disagree. pretty sure i'm um, pretty sure gt3 at misano will not have those numbers uh give me a second so the golf 20, 12 hours it is two months ago seven hundred and twenty two thousand views okay um give me a second adelaide 43k so a lot less known less known track anything in acc um in that no no compare that to the That's to the up. viewer the tv viewer numbers of formula one nascar or indycar i don't i don't you i think you're miscomparing the point of gt3 is that it's pervasive you can take the okay. same GT3 car that you take to Bathurst and to, and drive it in the ADAC, in the VLN, um, in the VRS, mm-hmm. uh, in IMSA. For goodness' sake, you can take the so- car that you took you drove at Daytona and take it to Australia and drive it in a completely so- different BOP. You're you're coming. You're so- you're. We we are near the the reason why there are so many GT3 series is money. It's cheap. Yes. It's 100%. easy, and you can get yep. uh, gentlemen drivers. Maybe at some point, gentle women uh, 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 drivers. Uh, mm-hmm. You can get gentlemen drivers um, paying you for for doing a couple of stints. So, I'm so at so the end of the day, have but but pff, I mean, yeah, the viewer numbers I on YouTube are okay. Yeah, I give you that. Yeah, and that's the thing is that it's not it, it it's. As I say, the question is whether it's a good thing or not. Because we're getting so many more people into racing. We're getting bigger grids. Bigger grids is always better. Yes, we only need two cars to make a race. But it's better if we have 20. And against would, Formula One's ma- oh, Formula it, One management's decision, 22 is better than 20. Yes. 
I, I was out. gonna I, I, I was gonna say the same it's it's yeah. a shame what they are doing it's it's shameful what they are doing to andretti yeah yes. yeah T tldr um uh, keep people who are not followers of f1 in the loop um oh that's fat point <laughs> yeah and andretti autosport is a prospective f1 team they want to they want to be an F1 team. They have the backing of General Motors and Cadillac uh, as an engine supplier. Uh, and uh, they have already made a name for themselves in uh, IndyCar and, and several other uh, racing In NASCAR, in IMSA. They, they own American themselves. motorsports. Yes, yeah, they, are they are proven motorsport enthusiasts. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and so they have the chops to, to do this probably better than uh, Williams um, or Haas. Uh, oh, who are yeah. existing teams? Uh, oh, Ferrari and <coughs> sorry. Now, now, <clears throat> maybe now, maybe we'll see. Uh, but anyways, so they uh, wanted to join uh, the F1 grid, and uh, F1 uh, said, "Well, only if you go through these insane amount of uh, hoops. Uh, one of the big hoops being uh, putting up like I think it was two hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which is a lot awesome. of money." Uh, in like basically insurance for the other teams that the other teams won't yeah. lose money by the new team joining which it is was called a dilution fund stupid and what insane is, yeah. uh but anyway totally so <laughs> despite all of that and jumping through a whole bunch more hoops that i won't mention uh, they 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 came and they yeah. provided everything that they needed to provide that they were asked yeah. to provide and they were still denied entry into formula one now, to add more meat onto the bones of that, the FIA approved their entry. It was for, it, the reason why I said it's not FIA; it's, it's Formula One management. FOM yeah. denied their uh, their entry. They haven't given a reason. Oh you know, no, they they've, they've, don't given, want... they've given a lot of reasons, but they are all bullcrap. Oh, yeah. okay, fine. Yeah, fine. they they were um, like you know they're not a they're not a serious. Thing. It was like <coughs> what it, Andretti like, more not serious. a serious thing. Yeah, they're like th dude, they're more serious than s several of your existing teams. What do yeah. you mean? They're more serious than the FIA. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. Yeah. I don't think correctly. that's an unreasonable thing to say. Yeah. Oh, I'd say they're more determined. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. And, and, I mean, and and for anybody who doesn't uh, react to the name Andretti, just. Take a look at Wikipedia, who Mario Andretti yeah. was and is, yeah. and you will know that uh, that's uh, a figure that has been in motorsport since forever and has more that, reason yeah. to be in Formula One and in other motorsports than many of the other groups. Yeah. I, I, One of the reasons that they gave for Andretti not entering is because there was no um, precedent for Andretti to be in Formula One. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Are that's... you kidding? <sighs> yeah. Yes. Formula One, you're an embarrassment to motorsport. Sort yeah. it out. Um, but they've and been for a couple to those of, of you watching, already. stop watching Formula One. Stop giving them money. Go and watch IMSA and, and SRO Motorsports instead. And IndyCar WC. and NASCAR. WC. Literally, the rest of... There is so much better racing everywhere else in motorsports or you can watch a red bull go around in circles uh, which yep. i don't find engaging yeah personally yeah. for years it was uh mercedes and the pips and now it's red bull in the pips yeah i yeah go and watch better racing you deserve it <laughs> watch uh the mazda mx5 north american <gasps> cup um, oh, that wrong. is much better racing than oh, Formula you're so One. not wrong. It's terrible, and they make a better <laughs> noise as well. Yeah, <laughs> they make a better noise than Formula One as well. They're a little <laughs> tiny bit slower, but that doesn't matter. They make a lot of noise. They make so much noise. Yeah, and and, the, and, and it's drafting without aero wash and things mm -hmm. like that as well. It's just, it's just it's just good racing, man. It's so good. Um, yeah. No, I think I think that's that's. Have we have we had a therapy session for this month? I think we have. I think we have. <laughs> <laughs> With all of that said, then, um, goodbye from Serta, because I can't see you. Ah, goodbye sorry. from Cody. <laughs> Adios. 
And it's a goodbye from me, Ike Sky. Uh, until next time, save fuel, collect pickup, and we'll see each other on the podium. Be excellent to each Bye. other. Bye. <laughs>